Hi, this is Natalie Hoffman of FlyingFreeNow.com, and you're listening to the Flying Free Podcast, a support resource for women of faith looking for hope and healing from hidden emotional and spiritual abuse. Welcome to episode 91 of the Flying Free Podcast. Today, I want to talk about hurting people. No, I'm not going to teach you how to hurt people. Most of us aren't interested in doing that. In fact, most of us stay stuck because we don't want to hurt anyone. We believe if we take steps to set boundaries or to say no or to get free, that we'll hurt all the people and we don't want to do that. Most of the women I work with are coming from a stance of love. They love God and they love their families and they love their church, and they love their friends. Their love is responsible and steady. These are the kinds of women that people trust, and for good reason. They show up because they genuinely care. They don't show up only when it's convenient for them, or only when they've got an urge to be nice out of the blue. They don't show up for others because they've got an agenda and they want something in return from the other person. They show up because they care. These are not the kinds of people who neglect their relationships or their responsibilities. Now, you take a woman like that after she's been burned over and over again by people who do take advantage of hardworking folks, and you begin to educate her in the importance of taking care of her own personhood, of setting those healthy boundaries and of being able to say no when necessary so that she can say yes to her priorities. And you know what happens? She sees the truth, and she wants to do something about it. But you know what her number one concern is? You know what she tells me? I know I need to make some changes in my life, but I don't want to hurt anyone. She feels the burden of responsibility to manage her husband's personal life, to manage her children's education, to manage all of their emotions, to manage their physical health and well-being, to manage their schedules, to manage her volunteer work at church, to manage her friendships, to manage her home, and we could go on and on and on. And if she says no to any of it and lets go of all that responsibility in order to place it where it belongs, people will get hurt. Her husband may miss his appointments. Her kids may not do their homework. Her friends will get upset that she isn't calling them to check in and see how they are doing. Her church will have a huge gap in that ministry that she was running, and people will suffer. Her home will never get clean, and the family members will have to wear dirty clothes to work and school because their servant won't do their laundry anymore. So much suffering, and it will be all her fault. My first thought is that this woman has a ton of power, doesn't she? My goodness, she runs her life and the lives of everyone around her. If you take her out of the equation, their lives fall apart. But you know what my second thought is? She's given away all of her own power to them. They actually run her life for their own agendas. So which is it? Does she have all the power or do they? And who is really hurting here. I personally think they've all given their power away, and I think they're all hurting as a result. But each one of those people are not hurting because of someone else. They're hurting because they've given someone else responsibility for their own happiness and well-being. And when human beings do that, they become disillusioned and unhappy. You see, it's impossible to be free when you give your freedom away. You guys, the scenario I just described is how the world seems to operate everywhere you go. Everyone wants to control everyone else, but nobody wants to do the one simple thing that could break the spell, and that's to control your own self. Nothing else. Just yourself. I'd like to propose a new way of living. Now, just know that most folks will never buy into this way of life. It goes against our brain's programming. You see, we've literally been programmed from birth to want to either, one, take control over others, or two, to give up control to purchase love and acceptance. We do one or the other, and 
Sometimes we do both. But if we took control of the one life God did give to us to control, and that's our own, no matter what anyone else says, and believe me, those who love to control will have total snit fits when you take back control of your one life that they want for themselves, and Christian people will use Christianese to shame you for taking your life away from them, they'll tell you that you're selfish, rude, unloving, stingy, and all the bad things. But just know that they are simply distraught that you've taken away their little plaything, you, and it's emotionally upsetting for them. It will take them some time to recover, but you wouldn't believe the resiliency of the human spirit. Trust me on this. They will survive, and they may even grow up a little bit in the process, which is always a good thing for the world. So let's just say that you take back your life and you decide what you will and won't do and when. You decide what you can offer and what you cannot offer. You decide when to say yes or no. And then what if you let them manage their own drama around all of that? Let them make your life mean whatever they want it to mean. It's all fine. They get to be who they are. They get to have their own rule book for how life is supposed to work, just like you do. Here's the thing. You may discover that some of your friends, even family, are not a good match for you. They want you to be blue, and you're a yellow. You've been trying to be blue for them for so dang long, but now you decide to be who you are, yellow, and they don't like it. Yellow doesn't work for them and their agendas, so they're going to be hurt that you've withdrawn your blueness from them and caused them deep upset and distress. Will they accuse you of changing and hurting their feelings? Yes, they might, and that could be upsetting to you if you buy into their manual. You see, in their manual for life, you must be blue. So if you believe that their manual is the master manual for all peoples everywhere, you may believe that you are responsible for their emotional well-being. This will cause you to feel guilty, and you may go back to being blue to ensure their state of emotional equilibrium. But what if you decided their manual belongs to them? What if you knew that their manual is just their own programming based on all of the things that they have heard, seen, felt, experienced, and learned throughout their life? And there's not much you can do about that. They get to have their manual. They get to believe whatever they want to believe. And that's their freedom. And that's their choice. Does that mean that their pain over you choosing to be your beautiful blue self is your fault? That you are somehow responsible for their emotional angst over your blueness? Nope. And nope. And more nope. You see, we can't cause pain in someone else when we are just being ourselves. If they experience pain, it's because of what they are making your choices mean for them. So let's bring this into real life, okay? Because we're not actually talking about blue and yellow here. Let's say that you decide to stop working in the church nursery because you've got your hands full at home with a two, four, six, and eight-year-old. Now, the nursery coordinator, who also happens to be a good friend of yours, makes that mean that you're not a very good friend. Now she has to find a replacement for you, and it's hard to find people who want to be a good Christian and serve in the nursery. What I'm saying is that's okay. She can make it mean that. And her feelings might be hurting, and that's okay, too. The reality is, you do love her and the church nursery. And no, you can't work there right now. You can totally love and say no. And they can totally be mad or sad or whatever they want to feel about it. Now, if their emotions cause them to shut you out because they now believe that you are no longer a good friend match for them, then... So be it. You've lost a bad friend match, but you've gained your sanity and your peace of mind. If you can let their emotions belong to them and not take responsibility for them yourself. Are you a woman of faith who also happens to be divorced? 
I've been developing a brand new program that will give you the tools you need to manage your thoughts and emotions, grow your self-confidence so that you can take risks and do things you never dreamed possible, and so you can build happy, healthy relationships with other people. Did you know none of this good stuff depends on your outward circumstances or your past? You can generate the life you've dreamed of all by yourself, and I'm going to teach you how through online classes and transformational coaching. Are you ready to take your new life to the next level and fly higher? Learn more and get on the waiting list at joinflyinghigher.com. Let's do another example. Let's say that you tell your kids if they don't do their Saturday morning chores, they don't get to go to the park that afternoon for a picnic. Now, they may whine and complain about what a strict parent you are and how you run them like slaves and take advantage of their free labor. They may talk about you behind your back and conspire to ruin your reputation in the neighborhood. But you know that they get to make your rules mean whatever they want to make them mean and you're going to love them anyway. Here's another example. You separate from your husband, and your teenagers make that mean that you want the whole family to burn to the ground, and they tell you so. Now, of course, you don't want that to happen. You've actually avoided taking this step for years now, hoping and praying for a miraculous transformation. But as you enter your 40s and consider the rest of your life, You know you won't survive under the circumstances unless you do something. You see your kids growing up and getting ready to launch their own lives, and you realize you never launched yours. Well, you tried, but it got shut down by the guy you're now choosing to separate from. Your teenagers get to have their thoughts, beliefs, and emotions about all of that. That's okay. But it doesn't mean that you have to think, believe, or feel the same way, or you're a bad mom. Parents and kids often think about life in very different ways. That's totally normal. You see, once you can normalize some of the drama, you can be more objective about it. You don't have to go deep diving into the same pool of emotions your kids are swimming in. You know, as an adult, that your kids will recover more quickly than you might imagine, And they will learn through this family disruption. Life for your kids is going to be just as hard and just as wonderful as it was for you. They will have horrible things happen to them. And they will have amazing things happen to them. And that's the human experience. So let them have their human experience. Your job is simply to love. Not to shield them from hurt, but to love them no matter what. And that's the same with everyone else in your life. You see, God didn't put you on planet Earth to protect all the humans from pain. It's not your destiny. But your brain really believes he did. Somehow, somewhere, your brain got wired with that belief. And now, you need to decide if you want to keep that belief or let it go. Here's what I think. I believe God put us on Earth to steward one life. Our very own And our job as a parent is to be an example of how to do that so that our kids have a good role model to follow. So if you're always throwing yourself under the bus and saying yes to everyone, making sure that everyone around you is pain-free at your expense, your kids may grow up either being just like you or exploiting others who are just like you. And what we really want for them is to grow up taking care of and being personally responsible for themselves. When they do that, they will have so much more mercy and grace and love for others because they will have lots of practice on themselves. That's how it works, my friends. What I'd like to show you is that when you say no to something and then you think, I'm hurting everyone, you feel guilty And when you feel guilty, you go out of your way to grovel and make up for what you just said no about, and the result is you end up hurting yourself, the one person you actually can control and take responsibility for. What's the bottom line here? If we have a pulse and we venture out of our hidey holes, it is inevitable that we will rub someone the wrong way. We'll look at them the wrong way. 
We'll make the wrong choice according to someone else's manual, and they will make it mean that we have hurt them or hurt our country or hurt the cause of Christ or hurt the entire world. (laughs) But the only way you actually, in reality, hurt anyone else, including yourself, is when you take their freedom to be responsible for their own lives away from them and you take it on yourself. That's how we really hurt other people here on planet Earth, when we steal their personhood away from them. Jesus never did that, and he never let anyone do that to him either. I'm not saying people didn't call him names and plot against him and ruin his reputation, and of course we know they finally murdered him, but he never let them steal his identity or his autonomy to make his own choices and do what God called him to do. And he never forced anyone to do what he wanted them to do either. Do you see Jesus? Let's be like him. Thanks for listening. And until next time, fly free.